you asked for it, here's another five of my top features for the new Microsoft Edge browser 2020. Hi guys, welcome back. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button. You will not be disappointed, I promise you. If you're not, let's get into it. Now I've had some real good feedback on my last video. I did mention in that video, there are more features I'd love to share with you. And if you wanted them, let me know. And that's what you did. You asked for part two, so here it is. Now, since the last video, Microsoft have included it in its new Windows update. And a crazy statistic is that now it's installed automatically on Windows updates version 1803 or higher, it will soon arrive on more than 1 billion Windows devices in use. A billion. Wow. Now, I'm not going to go over the things I mentioned in the last video, but there are still things to be improved on. Unfortunately, history and tab sync is still not supported. Microsoft have promised that that will be enabled this summer. Microsoft have also teased and are planning other new features such as vertical tabs, which lets you stack tabs at the side of the window instead of having a whole load of them across the top. More on that when it's released. Also, they're looking at a sidebar search function, which allows you to search the web without moving away from the current window you're on. You can also highlight text and click to search in the sidebar. Sounds great. And something which I'm sure is gonna be quite popular is Pinterest integration. Okay, let's not dwell on it. Let's get into five more top features in Edge. The first one is a PDF viewer. We all know what a pain it can be to sometimes open PDFs, but in Edge, it's a doddle. It opens up, instantly allows you to annotate it and to write on it, to erase what you've written, you can sign it, you can fill them out, and you can print and save directly from the browser, really quickly. Saves a lot of time. So this is the PDF opened up from a web page, or you could just click and drag it up into the browser to open it. As soon as it's there, you've got your page count on the top, you can scroll down, but these are your controls. Normal there, you can just zoom in, zoom out, rotate, and this is the drawer, you can draw on it whatever you want. If you need to sign something, you could tick boxes, save, or print, all in the browser, easy to do. Saves a lot of messing about. Number two is tracking prevention. Now lots of sites track your activity even when you are not accessing the website. Now you can adjust what website track your activity within the settings. Let me show you. Okay, so to access your tracking prevention settings, you go to settings and you go to privacy and services. This will bring up this page. Now it is set as balance for as default obviously basic and balanced content is more likely to be personalized because as balanced, it will only block trackers for sites you haven't visited. Once you visit a site, those trackers will not be blocked anymore. If you move to strict, it will block the majority of trackers. However, some parts of the website that might not work those that rely on the trackers. So it's up to you, which you want. You can even turn it off full stop and have no tracking prevention whatsoever. Interesting one down here. You can have a look at what's been blocked. Google, there we go. And it'll tell you what trackers have been blocked and how many and from where. Number three is multiple accounts. You can have different accounts to separate your personal browsing to your work browsing. There's even a guest account so it doesn't save your browsing history and all that sort of stuff. Let me show you how that works. Okay, so on multiple accounts, all you have to do is come over to the account page. It's pretty much where the same it was in Chrome. You've got the account that you're logged in now and any other accounts that are down there. If you want to add some, obviously you just go to add profile, add a profile and you'd sign in, sync your data or create an account. It's the same place where you go to browse as a guest. And when you browse as a guest, you'll get told what it won't and won't do. So it will save your downloads, but it won't save your history or your download history, cookies or site data. So it's a family. You can switch between profiles, you can switch between your work profile or your personal profile and have different edge profiles set up, homepage, opening tabs, that sort of stuff. 
There you go. Number four is you can customize the new tab page, which essentially is your home page. There's various different settings. I'll show you how to do it. Okay, so now you've created your new profile. The next thing you want to do is personalize your new tab page or your home page. Now, if you've imported your settings from Chrome or any other website, then some of these might be pre-populated for you. If not, you can set them up. You'd add, add a website and add them up. But this is what the default setting looks like. You come over to the cog and you can change your layout. Language is self-explanatory. Focus literally, it'll take away the background um, and just give you your quick links. And if you scroll down, it'll give you the news if you've got that turned on. Inspirational, just with a background, so you can change that. Informational, it'll show you, and this is what I prefer. So you can see the news of the day as it comes up. Now you can customize it on here with quick links. Turn them on or off, or image of the day, turn that off. And the content, whether it's visible as it is now, you can only see the headings. You have to scroll down to be able to see it. Our content off totally. And then all you have to do then is with your news, you can go to personalized news and you choose what sort of news interests you and what sort of news you want showing on your information page. Turn off any that doesn't bother you. Turn on the ones that do. There's loads of different categories. And when you open up a new page, it'll come up as you do it. So there you go. And number five, get a warning if you're visiting a potentially dodgy site. Now you've probably seen smart screen pop up when you're trying to install some sort of program and Microsoft doesn't like it. It's quite similar to that within the Edge, except it gives you that warning if you're potentially trying to access a known phishing site. I'll show you how to turn it on now. So to turn on your smart screen for browser, uh, you need to open up your window security. Once in there, you'll go to app and browser control. And then once in there, you'll go to reputation based protection settings and you'll get a list of settings to, that protect your device from malicious or potentially unwanted apps, files and websites. And the one you want is smart screen for Microsoft Edge. Make sure that's turned on. And check apps and files, two separate settings, but this will make sure that Microsoft Defender helps protect your device by checking any unrecognized applications and files from the web. So like go hand in hand there, so make sure them are turned on and it will warn you um, if you're visiting any phishing sites that have been marked untrustworthy. There you go. And my bonus tip. Now this bonus tip could actually be a video on its own. Edge has a load of hidden features which you need to access separately. Now there's loads in there, and that's why I said there could be another video. If you want to see the video on all of them, I can go into it in more detail. Just let me know in the comments. But for this bonus tip, it's going to be about dark modes. Now I'll quickly show you how you can turn dark mode on within Edge, but within these hidden features, access by putting Edge colon forward slash forward slash flags. I'll link it in the description. It allows you to turn on some hidden features, and one of those hidden features is you can turn dark mode on for all websites that you visit. Yeah, have a look. Okay, so bonus tip. Before I get into the bonus tip, it's sort of related. I just wanna show you how to turn dark mode on in Edge. So here, if you just go to settings and then go to appearance, the first thing you get to is default theme, and that's how you change it from light to dark. I know a lot of people prefer the dark mode. It's easy to read. I'm one of them, so that's how you can turn that on. Okay, so the hidden settings, which are, there's hundreds in there, so uh, I can't go through them all, but this is why I chose it. Probably do another video just on this itself, but to get to them, all I need to do is type edge colon forward slash forward slash flags. And you get 
to the experiments. So the, a lot of these are in dev. These are all uh, in better testing. Okay, so let's go. Before we turn it on, I'll just let's go to a website first. So this is Sky News. This is the website we're going to fit visit after we turn on dark mode that's what it usually looks like once you're in experiments you just type dark you'll get this force mode for force dark mode for web contents okay if you enable that restart edge it'll bring you back to this and now if we go to that web page you'll see it's now dark so it forces dark mode for websites it won't work for all of them but um, the ones I've tested, it works pretty well. So it just goes along with the dark theme if that's what you're running in the browser and on the computer as a whole. There you go. So there you go, five more tips and a bonus. If you really want me to go into the bonus and the edge flags and the hidden features, let me know below. I can do a whole video on that. There's loads of settings within there. If that was useful for you, please give me a like. I'd love it if you could subscribe up here. I've got loads more things planned. And if you want to see some more videos, I'll stick one up here. Guys, thanks for watching. I appreciate your support. See you next time.